Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog presents Carnage Week, and we're going to end Carnage Week with Web of Venom, Carnage Born. I know I promised you guys this for a while now. I wanted to do it at the end of Carnage Week because obviously in Carnage Family Feud and Carnage USA, we talked about Dr. Knives and the creation of Scorn, and when I saw that she showed up in this, I was like, well, this is perfect. We can knock out those two stories so that we were kind of going in a linear fashion, and then we can talk about this book, which uh, reintroduces her, I guess, into the continuity, uh, but then dismisses her pretty quickly. So we'll get into that uh, here in a second, uh, but I do want to give a, the digital code out for this first. So boom, there you go. First person to put the digital code in gets the copy of the comic book, go to that website, put the code in, and it only works once, so first person get it let me know down below if you got it and if you enjoyed the book uh, so of course this is going to be my opinion on the book it's going to be my opinion on Donnie Cates's run so far and unlike a lot of people out there who are really liking it uh, I am on the opposite side of that fence and the first thing I'll say is actually the art in this book was really good I think the artist is Danilo uh, or Danilo or Danilo something like that uh, Beirut and uh, I liked his artwork in this book it looked really cool and uh, it, it was very clear the images are great the panel layouts were really well done um, and uh, the coloring was really good in this book actually I want to give a shout out to Chris Peter who was the coloring artist I thought the coloring on this was uh, was done really well and I think Donnie Cates he's been consistently teaming up with really great artists on all of his Venom stuff the one shots uh, and then Ryan Stegman obviously on the main series and Yvonne Coelho filling in for the two issues of issue seven and eight and uh, and so I got to give you know him credit he's teamed up with really good artists and that's intriguing me in the at least picking up the book because they're aesthetically pleasing when I look at them I'm like wow these look really nice but uh, you know I know a lot of you guys out there are really digging the storyline but me I am not I am not digging the storyline uh, and I'm, this book even made it a little bit worse for me because actually uh, some people will say like oh well seek you know you can't give this too much of a you know hard time because this is setting up you know future storylines you know and what's gonna happen and it's funny because part of this Part of this I kind of, uh, you know, mentioned in a video back in March of this year. I think episode 110 of, of the show that I, th this show, um, I think it was on separation anxiety. I'll find a clip and we'll, we'll save it for later in the video. But I pretty much uh, essentially handed over a, an idea and, uh, you know, I said, and I'm not sure Donny Cates even watched it. So it could just be, you know, great minds thinking alike or whatever. Uh, but, uh, but I did post, you know, an idea. And I said, hey, if you know Donny Cates, if you want to use this idea, go ahead. And then that idea kind of pops up in this book. <laughs> so uh, you know, hey, I, I gave the guy the, the story. If he did watch it, I mean, that's fine. I'm not mad about it. But I just it just shows that uh, that you know, of course, I'm not excited because I'm kind of predicting things even before issue one came out. I you know had that idea in my head, and now we're like almost you know <laughs> nine months later, and it's finally popping up in a book. So. Uh, to me, um, I think I'm just not digging this because some of it feels a little predictable, and then the stuff that isn't predictable isn't even that interesting to me. Uh, you know, I feel like, oh, it's deviating from expectations, but not, like, in a good way. Uh, so anyway, I don't want to get too much into that. We'll talk about that here in a minute. But I want to just, you know, briefly give you my thoughts on this Carnage Born thing um, and kind of what Donny Cates is doing with it. And, you know, he starts off and... You know, and you'll have, you guys will have to correct me because I try to keep a lot of the stuff in my head, but obviously my head is a cluttered mess sometimes. So I might need some of you guys to refresh my memory because some of you guys are definitely better at the knowledge than I am. I can fully admit that. Uh, some of you guys correct me in the comments and I greatly appreciate it. So you might have to correct me here, but I don't remember Cletus Cassidy being born in Ravencroft. Or did they set that up? Or is that in the story we haven't covered yet? Because maybe that's in the... Um, the Jerry Conway Carnage run, and I haven't fully read all that yet. So for all I know, it's it's in that, because this definitely references a lot of that run. So I'm just curious, and maybe one of you guys can correct me, but I don't know if I remember him uh, being born in Ravencroft and being born with an umbilical cord around his neck. Uh, I don't know if that's something Donnie Cates is adding to this, or if it, that is actual continuity. So you guys let me know down below if that's the case. But the story opens up with him as a baby being choked out by his own umbilical cord, and then I guess seeing null or something or you know getting touched by the darkness uh, a lot of this feels a little bit like um like jeff johns as green lantern run i think that's another reason why I'm, i kind of struggle with it a little bit it's like you know they're basically making cletus cassidy here black hand and black hand was tethered to uh, Necron, I think was his name, and he was like this character that was like part of the darkness and part of the void. And uh, you know, whenever Black Hand died, Necron was the one who brought him, let him, you know, come back to Earth and kind of be a, like a sleeper agent for Necron to return. And that kind of feels like what Cletus Cassidy is here. He's part of some weird prophecy called the Final Night or something, or they mentioned in here the Final Night. I don't know if that's the actual. Hopefully, that's not the actual title because obviously that's in Blackest Night was the book where uh, Necron and Black Hand were in. So I hope it's not that much of a, a ripoff of that story. Um, but it, it kind of feels a little bit like that. And so this whole issue 
is someone basically telling the story of, of, of Cletus Cassidy. And again, this is where I get so frustrated with Donny Cates. He doesn't know how to write. Now, he does it in his other stuff, like Cosmic Ghost Rider and you know, some of his other work in Thanos, um, where people aren't just sitting around telling stories. That's all he seems to do in his you know run of Venom here. It's like Eddie Brock. He has to be sit and told what the threat is, what the story is. Like he's, and it's like, dude, he's a journalist. He can't figure some of this out on his own. I know he's kind of a dumb guy in a way, but he's also kind of a street smart kind of guy. So he can't figure out some of this on his own or, or have like one thing hit him. You know, like here, here's a bunch of news dump on you. You know, like here's some exposition. And then he's like, whoa. And then after that, it's like, okay, that was the surprise moment. Now he's going to go investigate it and, you know, further his own plot. Donny Cates doesn't know how to do that with Eddie Brock, and it's very frustrating. And then again here with Cletus Cassidy. Cletus Cassidy is not furthering kind of his own plot. He probably will after this, but that's what Donny Cates keeps promising. It's like, oh, okay, now, you know, the issue ends with the person finally ready to, you know, go after their destiny or, or you know, make a decision for themselves. And then the next issue, they revert back to, you know, not having any answers. So, uh, so th this book... It, that's what it feels like to me. It just feels like another setup to another disappointment, uh, you know. Uh, so, you know, you have Cletus Cassidy. It's a whole life story being told, how he was born and reborn and, you know, and all this stuff. And that, yeah, he's uh, basically been this guy who's just been impossible to kill. And once he, you know, you know, merged with the Carnage symbiote for the first time after being in jail with Eddie Brock, uh, you know, that basically was his, you know, next rebirth. And then he went, you know, brought brought to space by the sentry and ripped in half and that was like another death and then he came back to earth and he was reborn again and you have this woman in a cloak here you know basically telling you know like she made the time to make a powerpoint presentation and post all these pictures up of uh of eddie you know of uh, cletus cassidy about his life like the how you know the ravencroft you know she she managed to put all this up um and uh, you know to do this ritual and you're just like i don't know it's it's really it's really goofy and then they have um you know the you know she sets a fire and it makes the the symbol from null um, so she's like, all right, he's part of some prophecy. There's like these weird writings with that, you know, that uh, the Grendel fought Thor at one point and, uh, and that Thor banished the darkness and now the darkness is coming back in the form of Null and, you know, he's trapped in his own world on Clintar and they need to break him out. Um, and, uh, and so this woman here is just going on and on and on. It's just like 12 pages or 13 pages of just exposition. That's all it is. That's all Donny Cates ever seems to know how to do with these Venom books is just like, hey, let's just have, I have this huge story I want to tell but I don't know how to tell it creatively, so I'm just gonna just have someone talk and explain it to everybody. And that's just how it feels to me. It feels very lazy. Um, it's like, oh, I have all these great ideas, which I think he does, but just the most lazy execution possible. Um, and so, you know, you have some things showing, but here it's like, don't have all of this. Like, you know, don't have someone narrating this. Just show, like, have things happen, man. Like, have things just, you know, occur in the book, you know. And so, like, they show, like, her agents going in and wipe, you know, wiping out the guards. And she says, there was quite a battle to retrieve his body. Show me the battle, man. Like, like cut all this down to, like, eight pages or six pages. And then show me the battle of you and your men taking, like, show me some action in this. You know, I, I don't know. It's like, It just feels very, like I said, just very lazy. Uh, but then it turns out she actually has custody of Cletus Cassidy's body. She stole it from these government people who found him after, you know, because we saw him in, what was it, Venomized. He was left out in the space with the poison suit around him. He managed to come, you know, they were way out in the middle of nowhere in space. Somehow he ended up back at Earth, didn't fall on Clintar. Like, God forbid that happened and, you know, have a really cool creative story happening over there. Uh, you know, because they were that far out in the space, he could have landed on Clintar. But no, he landed, he came all the way back and landed on Earth, and the suit, his symbiote saved him somehow, and now he's like a, you know, all burnt, you know, head to toe, well, not head to toe, head to legs or, or waist, because, you know, he still doesn't have his legs. Um, and uh, and so what they do is they took the codex, the one that the maker was looking for in issues seven and eight, who he thought Eddie Brock had and hid somewhere. Uh, turns out that this lady had it, and she's, uh, you know, going to use it and give it to Cletus Cassidy because it's their last link to Null. So she pours it in and she brings, um, you know, Cletus Cassidy back to life and he reemerges as actually uh, this giant Null Carnage Venom creature, which is uh, actually, I gotta, get, I gotta admit, is pretty cool looking. So then, of course, everyone's chanting. They're like, yay, this is great. We got Carnage back and he's connected to Null and, you know, we know about this prophecy and, you know, everything and, and now we get to play a part in it. And so while Cletus Cassidy is struggling, he's hearing Null's voice in his head. Null has like a slight connection to him. You know, he's like I said, he's this big, you know, Null monster. It looks really cool, actually. I think the art is fantastic in this. Uh, but then we reveal that this woman in the, the cloak, she takes off her, uh, you know, robe and she reveals herself to be Scorn, Dr. Knives, who last I knew, she wanted to kill Cletus Cassidy. She was working for the government to kill him. But here she is now uh, with the remnants of her suit. She mentions that 
the you know that null was a codex like that little bit of piece of sliver that they were able to recover is just a piece of the grendel monster you know uh, that was here on earth and so that is a connection to null and so they wanted to give that to Cletus Cassidy because he didn't have a symbiote anymore, but somewhere deep inside of him, there's still a codex. There's still a trace of the, the symbiote, basically. And, uh, and that's what this whole thing is. It's everyone who's ever been possessed by a symbiote or, you know, or bonded with one, uh, I guess no matter how long they have, I don't know. But, uh, but it, even if it touched you, or I don't know how it works, but it leaves a trace of itself in you, just happens to do that. So as long as, uh, you know, Scorn, she has a plan here to feed herself. She's like, hey, you can eat me and devour my codex. There's a, a proper way to do it. And Carnage is like, yeah, I don't care what the proper way is. I'm just going to eat you and, you know, take your codex. And so once he does that, he kind of regains his self in a way. And he kind of looks, you know, a little bit more Carnage-esque. And he's able to fight off the voice in his head of Null. Um, and then again, the writing, you know, this is like, oh, wow, actual stuff is happening. This is what I want in a comic, uh, Donny Cates. I want, you know, it's like, all right, Cletus chooses to kill somebody. He eats somebody. He grabs somebody, questions them, asks them what happens. No one's narrating all this. No one's telling me that this is happening. I'm seeing it with my own two eyes. Uh, and that's, I need you to do more of that. Uh, so this book ends a, little, a lot stronger than it began, in my opinion. Um, it's like, I'm tired of just the, like, someone explaining the story of the week. That's just what these Venom books feel like to me. It feels like everyone else has the, it feels like, you know, Donny Cates has the answers and he's feeding them to us in the dumbest way possible. It's like, all right, everyone sit around and here's your new bowl of cereal. Eat up, you know? And it's like, come on, man, treat your audience a little bit better than that. And, and rely on the artist a lot more too. Like, you know, give faith that they are drawing and communicating the story the best, uh, to their ability and doing it a, a good job. Cause I think they are, but then you go in and you add all this like exposition over it and it just feels like it's like dude you don't get paid by the word tell a good story like first and then uh you know and and if if you need a little bit exposition exposition in there that's fine put it in from time to time but focus on the story get things moving don't just sit here i'm just reading text box after text box until the last like five pages and it's frustrating as hell um, so then what happens is uh, what I was talking about earlier, where the book ends and uh, it has Carnage here finding out that he has to track down everyone who's ever had a symbiote, even though some of these people are dead, like Scream. I'm like, why is she on there? Isn't her human host dead? And Hybrid, I think, doesn't even exist anymore. He's split into these four other ones. So does Scott Williams, he's still alive. Uh, is he still, you know, carrying the suit? You know, I know the thing and Carnage, these guys were in um, Carnage USA. They were, you know, taken over by the symbiote. I think Wolverine was too. So that's why he's on the list hammerhead i can't remember that issue maybe it was like that recent book that came out uh which was like that one shot uh the annual spider-man annual maybe it happened in there and there was some planning with that i don't know but uh, the one thing that is not on this list actually are the people from separation anxiety so uh that's where my idea uh, where you know like why this doesn't surprise me that the storyline is oh carnage has to go find other people who have pieces of symbiotes left in them that was a storyline that I actually suggested a while ago. So I was able to look through some old videos. I found it in episode 110. Uh, the clip is uh, just of me talking about separation anxiety in a moment uh, from it. So I'm going to cut to that clip and we'll talk about it afterwards. Yeah, overall, like at the end, you know, obviously the symbiote breaks out in New York. It makes its way. So while Eddie and, and Ken Ellis are on the run together, the symbiote, they're trying to get closer to the symbiote uh, because they found out it's in New York and the symbiote is on its way to Eddie Brock and it's jumping host to host and, uh, and, and you know, trying to do good and, you know, like one person's getting mugged, the symbiote wraps around them and they you know, kill the mugger, and then the symbiote leaves the, you know, the victim and leaves them, you know, behind or whatever. And I was like, oh, that's pretty interesting. That'd be cool to see a storyline where all the hosts that the symbiote, you know, bonded to temporarily, if there's a storyline later in the comics or, or nowadays in the comics where they touch on that, you know, and, and, and those people are suffering some kind of, like, separation anxiety of their own, maybe, or some kind of PTSD or, or trauma of getting alien you know, memories in their head or something. That would be a cool story, I think, to tell one day. Uh, Donny Cates, if you're watching, maybe that's something you could write in the Venom book. So there you go. My suggestion, not while not exact, obviously, was that, hey, there are people out there that have symbiote traces in them, and uh, and maybe you could tell a storyline that brings them back or involves them in a new storyline where someone's, you know, looking for them or, uh, you know, or they, you know, uh, ha are suffering some kind of, you know, invasion of memories. Maybe they're all, you know, everyone who's ever been touched by a symbiote is now starting to get visions from Null or something. Um, but yeah, so when I saw this book, I was like, 
weird. I was like, didn't I suggest something similar? Not exact, obviously, but similar. Uh, so I was like, yeah, let's go back and look at some of those episodes. And uh, and I came across that separation anxiety one. I was like, oh, that's the one. That's the one I mentioned it in. I go, yeah, because uh, I was like, what story was that? And I was trying to think, you know, and I saw, I was like, oh, yeah, it was the one where Eddie Brock, what was the one where the host was going from body to body trying to look for Eddie Brock? And I was like, right, separation anxiety. So once I found that episode and rewatched it, I was like, oh, wow, I do mention something similar to what's happening in the Carnage Born story. So uh, so to me, like I said, when I, when I got to that last page, it wasn't like, Oh, dun dun dun! Like that wasn't like that to me. I was just kind of like, oh, okay. I mean, I, so Carnage's mission is that he has to go, and uh, you know, it's it's neat to give Carnage like a specific goal. I kind of like that in Carnage USA. As weird as the goal was, it was like, oh, I'm gonna go create like this family and, and live in this small town and take it over. And he kind of had like weird, you know, you know, aspirations to do weird things like that. I kind of like when his goals are weird. This one is like, all right, I'm gonna go and serve some master, and I'm gonna go find all these codexes so I can get a taste of Null again. So I can kind of maybe see where he is. I mean, is, is Carnage going to be the one to kill Null? Uh, maybe that's the twist in the storyline, is that, uh, is that you know, he's a, he's an, a symbiote born of Earth, so he shouldn't really be that special in, as far as, like, um, a, a tool that Null thinks he can use. Uh, it seems more like he could be a weapon to fight Null, uh, because in most, uh, you know, Earth born symbiotes are a little bit different. We've had a couple now since Carnage, um, like Scorn and stuff like that, but uh, but still, it, it'd be interesting to see if that's like the twist, if, if Carnage is actually one who kills, uh, you know, uh, Null because he's like, no, like, uh, you know, I want your power or I want to use your ability to wipe out everything. Um, I'm not sure, but right now he's coming across a very black hand to uh, Null's Necron, and so that to me is why, like, the also it doesn't feel very interesting to me. I'm like, ah, uh, you know, it is what it is, I guess. But the, again, these are just my opinions. Uh, these are just my thoughts on it. So I'd love to hear yours. I know a lot of you guys feel differently on the series than I do, and I appreciate that. So if you have a different perspective, or if you saw something different in this issue than I did, or you liked it for different reasons, or you know hated it for different reasons, whatever, we can continue our conversation down below. Uh, but to me, I'm just getting fed up with paying money uh, you know, $4.99 for these one shots and $3.99 for the main book. And I just feel like I'm not getting my money's worth. Like I'm not having fun reading these books. Uh, and that's what these books should be. And I feel like they're, they're so serious. There's not really that sense of humor to it. There's not that weirdness. It, it feels like someone who's like, oh, I know everything about Venom. And then they focus on one version of Venom and they're just writing that one version. And it's like, ah, if you really knew Venom, like Mike Costa, I felt like had a better understanding of Venom. And his run started off a little rocky to me. That's why I was like, all right, I'll give Donny Cates a chance. You know, maybe I'll read, you know, a few more issues. But uh, the more I get into this, it's like, oh, this is, he's just doubling down on all these, like, serious tones and, and these and these concepts of his. And then their concepts are so big and, you know, they're so elaborate that he has to spend entire issues just explaining it to you. And to me, that doesn't feel like an immersive experience. It just feels like someone's telling me, like, a bedtime story that isn't interesting and it's boring. It almost feels like someone's just reading, like, a you know, a school book to me. Like, it's like, oh, here's a chapter from this one book. And they're just reading it to me. It's like, all right, but this is a comic book. I don't want that experience. I don't want to feel like I'm just being told something. Um, I want to experience it in the book. I don't want to see Eddie Brock strapped to a chair and being interrogated uh, I, until the ending of the book. I want to see him, you know, running through San Francisco, tearing people up, tearing guards up, fighting, you know, not being cognizant of what he's doing. Uh, maybe he's asleep. The symbiote is just reacting. Show all of that and then show him get caught at the end instead of showing all that with text balloons over it and cutting back to Eddie Brock, you know, strapped to a chair. It's not interesting to me, Donny Cates, and I'm sure it's working for a lot of people. A lot of people out there are really digging the book, so, you know, obviously I'm in a minority here, so if, if, if you don't want to listen to criticism, that's fine. Keep doing what you're doing, I guess, and you're still going to, you know, sell a lot of copies and you're going to, you know, keep at least some people's interest, but for me, I, I, I want better. I want a lot better than this. Uh, so Carnage Born, great artwork. Uh, and bad storytelling as far as I'm concerned. But great concepts. Donny Cates has a great idea overall for what he's doing with this universe, and that's the only reason I kind of struggle when I go to the comic store and I'm like, oh, I don't want to pick up the next issue. I don't want to spend my money uh, on this book. And that's saying a lot. I'm the Venom vlog, <laughs> and I don't want to currently buy Venom books. How insane is that? Uh, but, you know, for me, I'm kind of like, oh, I could skip them. Um, I might, and I might. If I just keep being negative all the time, I might end up just getting to a breaking point and skipping reviewing the new issues. And I'm sorry to say that to you guys, uh, but there's plenty of older stuff we can still go back and dive into. And then when these all come out and trade, maybe we'll talk about them then. But I struggle with it. So one day you might see me pop on here and say, hey, 
this is my last Venom review uh, for current comics. And I hope that day doesn't come anytime soon. I hope Donny Cates turned things around and gets me interested again. Uh, but after reading it, you know, issue nine, I'm not so sure. But we'll talk about that in an upcoming episode. Thanks so much for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.